I've always been interested in film. I've always wanted to make films about sharks. And as I got older, um, when I took the leap into doing what I do, I, I went into it with a very specific idea of, of the style that I wanted to do, and that is to tell stories about people predominantly, to tell stories about people and nature. What can I say about my relationship with the ocean? Where I feel my, most comfortable is under the water. No mobile phones, no people, no noise, no machines. It's my form of meditation. I'm David Daly, I'm a filmmaker from the UK, um, and I'm in Mallorca again for the screening of A Ray of Light 2, which is the sequel to A Ray of Light, which I filmed over here in 2012. The first film, A Ray of Light, uh, was, was a look at Brad Robertson um, and the work that he was trying to achieve with marine conservation in Mallorca. Um, very much him sort of struggling against the odds to try and, uh, and make his part of the world a better place, uh, which was surprisingly quite successful. I didn't expect it to be as sort of popular as it was. So the second film, what I wanted to do was to come out, um, and whereas the first one is very retrospective, looking back at things that he'd previously done or things that he wanted to do in the future, the second film, I wanted that to actually show these things happening uh, and to be have a bit more of a well-rounded storyline to it, so more of a documentary style as opposed to a, a reflective vignette on something which has, has already happened. So um, it's a little bit longer, it's about half an hour. I uh, filmed it in the spring and now over here for the screening here in October. One thing about A Ray of Light 2 uh, was that I wanted to make it a much more well-rounded story. Um, but on top of that as well is to really improve upon everything on the first one so make it visually more appealing visually more attractive uh, sonically improve it uh, and make it everything sound better and to to really tell a story to tell an important story a personal story but using really beautiful imagery and trying to capture the imagery of everything that's going on and challenge myself in regards to cinematography so Aesthetically, I wanted it to look beautiful. Sonically, I wanted it to sound beautiful as well. So uh, I think I achieved that. I think we'll have to wait until what people say from the, uh, the screening. of storytelling is dying in film um, and I wanted to be the guy who does things differently um, essentially people weren't making the films that I wanted to see anymore so I figured if no one else is gonna make those films then I have to make them because I want to see them so essentially it's making films that I want to see that nobody else is making um, so it's taking the responsibility to do it myself. I think the biggest challenge overall was um, the film for me is about, on the face of it, it's a film about stingray conservation, it's a film about marine conservation, but for me it, it isn't. The film for me is about a man with a passion who's desperately driven to make his little corner of the world a better place for everybody whilst at the same time struggling with the pressures of fatherhood. It's all part of the process of showing people that the reality behind conservation and, and doing something for the good of others is not sitting behind the keyboard on Facebook. It's not signing endless petitions. It's making sacrifices to the detriment of your own life to try and achieve a goal which benefits everybody.
Do you want me to stop the camera? No, I don't mind. I don't mind stopping. The end of the film, what was going through my head at that point, and being completely honest, and I don't like saying it, was I knew where the conversation was going, and I knew where I wanted it to go, and I knew that where I wanted that conversation to go would be very uncomfortable, and it could be quite upsetting. So what was going through my head was how can I deal with this in a way which gets him to kind of pour his heart out without making it a really deeply unpleasant experience for him, knowing it is going to be quite an unpleasant experience. You're trying to get something out of someone, which you know is in there. And I wanted to know how he felt about it because the film is a lot about a guy who's struggling with everything um, and achieving incredible things. So. To see that was, was not nice. Um, yeah, I say to him, do you want me to keep the camera rolling? And he understood that you know, he was okay with keeping the camera rolling and you need to get the impact of that because you're cheating the viewer if you don't show them this is what it is. You're cheating people out of the reality of everything and it's uncomfortable to have a shot linger on your friend being so upset. Um, so we kind of like cut the camera off, we had a big hug, we had a chat off camera, uh, and then moved on. That's what you do. As someone who does a lot of marine conservation films, and obviously very passionate about the ocean, um, how, how were you sort of feeling before the, the nets went out, you know, and then, and then obviously seeing these stingrays come up? Um, it, you know, and we worried about bycatch, you know, that sort of thing. The stuff with that, the actual fishing side of it was, was a difficult one really because I love marine animals, you know, I, I love all animals, but uh, I don't like the idea of capturing animals. I don't like the idea of putting animals in distress, but I eat meat, you know, but I eat sustainable. Um, I, st I eat seafood, but I eat sustainable seafood where I can. I try and make a difference in the sense of um, thinking through what it is that I'm buying, what it is that, I what it is that I'm consuming. I'm not a vegan. I believe in animal rights. I love animals, but I'm not a vegan. Um, some people may say that's hypocritical. Um, I don't care. That's fine. What came up first were the, uh, the, the tremble nets. Um, and before the, the nets came up, we sent a team of divers into the water to, to check out what, um, what was in there, um, rays and or bycatch, um, with the idea of um, possibly separating the nets. Um, if we did have a, a, lot, a lot of rays in there, um, not to, um, to, to cause them any more stress by, um, by dragging 250 metres of net along the sand. So the idea was to break it up into 50 metre sections and, and pull them up one at a time. And then came the, the, the shocking reality of, of what we were doing. Knowing that we were going to be going and catching these animals was a difficult one um, for me, but the fact was that the people who were doing it made me feel a lot better about it because they all care about the well-being of these animals. Nobody wanted the animals to be injured. Nobody wanted the animals to be in distress for any period of time. But seeing it and going down and filming it when the rays were trapped and seeing how distressed they were was not pleasant. It was, I didn't enjoy shooting that. And you've got to get up close. I mean, it's all very well saying that if you go up close and you will distress the animals because they're captured in a net and they've got this big thing approaching them that they don't know what it is anyway. But you have to capture it because there's no point hiding it from the viewer. We are at Palm Aquarium for the premiere of Array of Light 2. So Thursday, October.
October 30th. Um, so yeah, so we're here for the screening. How are we feeling? Uh, feeling nervous. I was kind of like, I've been okay all day. Um, but now it's sort of like when you wait to see if anyone actually turns up and what the reaction is and stuff. So, so yeah, I'm a bit nervous, but really excited. I'm looking forward to it. I have absolutely no idea. I missed the original showing of the first Ray of Light last year and I really wanted to see that. So when I had the opportunity to come here, I was just really excited and I'm looking forward to finding out what's going on. That's one of our biggest problems is people <coughs> want to get involved, um, but uh, we, we cannot at this stage um, supply the demand for, for volunteering with us. We, we, we need to keep growing at a controlled rate um, and all these volunteers that are, that are saying they want to get involved, um, they really need to have a little bit of patience for that growth. When I watch it back now, I actually still, I go back to watch little bits of it and then I'll end up watching the whole thing before I know it's over, um, which is a good sign, I think. I, I like it, I'm really, really proud of it. Uh, it makes me think of a time which was difficult, which was tiring and strenuous, at times really stressful, um, but also at times which was exciting and invigorating and artistically when you can bring certain things to life. Um, there were low points, definitely, but there were high points. And the thing is just that it was, it was a small, a relatively small group of people who were brilliant people, and working with people who, who were all focused, going their one goal, be it on the project, on the scientific side, be it on the uh, conservation side, be it on the filmmaking side. Everyone had goals, the set objectives that they were focused towards going, and nobody deviated from the path of that. Uh, which is brilliant. It's inspiring to me to work in, in a team like that. I love it. It's, so yeah, I am, I'm proud of it. I'm really proud of it. I like it. It still moves me when, when I watch it. Um, and I think that's an important thing as well. If I didn't get moved by my own work, then I'm not putting my own kind of heart and soul into it. So it still does that. So I'm proud of it. That's what the story Said next week in the garden